I have three counting problems for you this month, and I'm going to show off some of my favorite counting strategies. We're going to start right here. We've got five rows, each containing five bricks. And we want to count the number of ways Mario can choose five bricks, one in each row, so that any two bricks chosen in adjacent rows are adjacent. So he couldn't pick this brick and this brick. For example, they have to be, he's going to pick this brick, he's got to pick one of these two. All right, we got the plan. Now we got, oh, wait, we don't have a plan. We've just got the problem. Hmm, need to come up with a plan. I'm going to start off with one of my favorite counting strategies. I'm going to try to create one of what I'm trying to count. Because I think yeah, maybe I don't quite understand the problem, but if I try to create one of what I'm trying to count, maybe I'll start to understand what's going on. Now I'm going to try to create one of these things that Mario's trying to count. And I'm going to build, I'm going to build it going from the top down. I'm going to pick one brick in the top row. Let's say I pick this one. So I choose that one right there. Then Mario's going to have two choices. For the next brick. Can't pick either of these, can't pick that one, but he could pick either of these. So say Mario picks this one. And then he has two choices again. Say he picks this one. And then he's got two choices in the next row. And then say he picks this one. So it's starting to look like he always has two choices each of the each step down, but well, what happens if he picks this one first? If he picks this one first, then he only has one choice. You know, next row he can only pick this brick, can't pick any of these. So it's not just two choices each step of the way. Huh. All right, time for my second, second favorite counting strategy. Complicated problem. I'm going to make a simpler version of the problem. Let's just forget the bottom four rows. Then it's really easy, right? Mario just has, you know, five bricks. And you can choose each one in just one way. You can only choose this one in one way, this one, this one, this one, and this one. That's all he can do. He's got one way to choose each of these bricks. Not very interesting. He's got five choices. If we only had one row, we'd be done. We'd write down five. What if we have two rows? Now let's look at this brick here. How many ways can Mario, starting from the top, get to this brick? Well, he could pick this one and then this one, or he could pick this one and then this one. He can't choose one of these three and then go over here and choose this one because they're not adjacent. So that gives us two ways to choose this brick. Same game here. To get to this brick, Mario can go here and then here, or here and then here. It gives us two. Same thing here. Same thing here, two ways to get here. This last brick, Mario can only get there in one way. If he wants to include that, he has to start here. Only one way to do that. All right, so that knocks off two rows. Let's go down a row, see what happens if we have three rows. Now over here, the only way he can get to this brick is going through this one. Now there are two ways to get there. So for each of those two ways, he can, he can come down here in a total of two ways because he can't go through any of these other bricks. But what about this brick? And to get to this brick, he can either come through here, or he can come through here. So there's a total of four ways to get here. There are the two ways he gets here, and then continues down to there, and the two ways that he gets here, and then continues down to there. Same drill here. I've got two routes that go through here, two routes that go through here to get down to there. Same thing here, but over here, he only has three. He only has three ways to get here because he's got two ways to get there, and then continue, and only one way to get there, and then continue. Two and one gives us three ways total to get down to here. So let's move down to row four, and you can see what's happened. See, all we were doing here is thinking about what happens. Start from the first row, build to the second, build to the third. We're creating that path for Mario. The number of ways he can get to this brick is six, because he can go through this brick. He can get to this brick in two ways, because us two ways to get down to there. And you can get to this brick in four ways. Gives us four more to get down to there. Same drill here. Four ways to get there, plus the four ways to get there gives us eight total ways to get there. Four and four is again eight. And then here I've got four ways to get there, three ways to get there. Gives us a total of seven ways to get down to there. But then this last brick, the only way Mario can get there is by going any one of the three paths to there and then straight on to that last brick. So there's only three ways to get here. Finally, I'm ready to knock off the last row. There's six ways to get here, because every single way he gets here, well, there's just one way to get back, get down to here in this bottom left corner, so there's six ways total. To get to this brick, he's got six ways to get here, and then he can go that way. And he's got eight ways to get here, and then go this way, so that's six and eight gives us a total of 14 ways to get there. I'm gonna keep going in the same way. 8 and 8 gives us a 16, 8 and 7 gives us a 15, the 7 and the 3 gives us 10 ways to get to this corner. So, now all we have to do 
is add them all up. I got six ways to get here, 14 ways to get there, 16 to get there, 15 to get there, 10 ways to get there. Each one of these ways gives us one of these ways that Mario can choose the bricks. So we just add these up. 6 and 14, that gives us 20. Adds another 10, that gives us 30. These two together is 31. 30 plus 31, 61. Total ways for Mario to choose the bricks. We're ready for our next problem. Got the number 40,231. It's a five-digit positive integer. Uses five consecutive digits, although not necessarily in order. We want to count how many such five-digit numbers there are. Okay, we have to be careful here, and they kind of give us a little hint here, right there. They gave us an example that includes zero, and we have to be careful about zero, because you don't want zero at the front of your number, because then you're not going to have a five-digit integer. So if I look at these five digits, it looks like, oh, there's five factorial ways to arrange them. But I can't include the ones with zero that goes first. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about this in terms of cases. I'm going to do some case work here. And whenever you're going to do some case work counting, you need to be nice and organized. The first case is I'm going to use the digits 0 through 4. These are the digits we're going to use to make our number. We're going to make these five-digit integers by figuring out what five digits I'm going to use and then counting the number of ways I can arrange them. So we're going to have number of numbers. That's fun. Now, I've got these five digits, 0 through 4. Now, it looks like there's five factorial ways I can arrange them to make a number. But I have to be careful. I have to exclude the ones where 0 comes first. All right, so I don't want, I, I don't want something like this. This is no good. I have to exclude these. So I have to count these. Well, if 0 comes first, there are four digits remaining. There's four factorial ways to order 1 through 4. So I have to subtract off the four factorial ways I can drop in 1 through 4 in these blanks. Well, let's go on to the next case, 1 through 5. That's just going to be, take the numbers 1 through 5, there are five factorial ways to order them. They'll all produce different five-digit numbers. There's five factorial of these. Same thing for the digits 2 through 6, 3 through 7, 4 through 8, and 5 through 9. Each one of these has five factorial possible orders, so I'm just going to combine them all. Now I'm going to say the total number of numbers that fits under these. There's five of these cases, and each one contributes five factorial. So this is my total. This is my total, the total number of five-digit positive integers I can make to satisfy the problem. So I'm just going to add them up. I've got, this is what we can think of this as one times five factorial. Add it to the 5 times 5 factorial, I get 6 times 5 factorial, minus the 4 factorial. Of course, that's just 6 factorial, so that's 720. We're going to subtract off 4 factorial, which is 24, gives us a total of 696. Time for the next problem. All right, we want ordered triples of integers. I'm going to underline integers so I don't forget that satisfy x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than 3. We're going to have to try that casework thing again. And once again, we have to be very careful. We set up our cases so that we count everything once and only once. We don't want to count anything twice. We don't want to miss anything. So I'm going to start off, well, the easiest case is just 0, 0, and 0. All right. Pick 0, 0, and 0. So we have the number of triples here. There's just one. There's just one way we can make them all zero. All right, but the next thing we can do is I can have two of them as zero. And then what can the other one be? So if I have two zeros here, well, the other one can't be higher than one. Because if I put a two in here, if I square two, I get four. So I can stick a one in there, but I have to be careful here. I see these squares. I have to be careful. I've got to remember the negatives. So I can stick in a one or a negative one. So... I can have zero, and I'm not going to use these dashes. I need to worry about positives and negatives now. I'm going to go zero, zero, and plus or minus one. Now let's see, how many look like this? Well, there are three ways I can choose which of x, y, or z is non-zero. And then there are two ways I can choose that number to be one or negative one. So there's three ways to pick which one is non-zero, and then for whichever one's non-zero, there are two choices for what its value 
can be. So I can go 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 0. For those of you keeping score at home. Now in my next case, what if only one of them is 0? If only one of them is 0, well then the other two, well we already know that they can't be 2 or higher or negative 2 or lower, so the other two have to be plus or minus 1. Well now I, once again, I have three choices for the special one, three choices for the one that's going to be 0. And then for each of the other two variables, I have to choose whether it's going to be positive 1 or negative 1. It gives me two choices in each case. And let's see, my next case is none of them is 0. But that's impossible. Because for each of these variables, if it's not 0, then the square is at least 1. So the sum of the three will be three or higher. So that's it. These are all my cases. So now we just add them up. One is one. Three times two is six. Three times two times two is 12. Add these up and I have a total of 19. And we're done.